Hey, what's up, fam? It's the Broke Capitalist coming at you. Uh, just with some announcements, I just uh, put out a new publication today, and it's free on uh, Amazon until Thursday. It's called Things I Wish I'd Learned in February. But I also wanted to shout out another content creator, Mr. Eric July, and that's, we're going to talk about briefly about what he's been able to accomplish recently. I'll just start his uh, little promo here. Let's check him out. The Riververse is the result of a comic book lifer that wanted to be a part of the solution instead of always griping about the problem. Now, don't get me wrong, this was always a part of my aspirations. However, the current climate certainly sped things up. You've watched some of your favorite comic book characters be bastardized to the point to where they're completely unrecognizable. They're just used as career stepping stones for a lot of writers that don't care about the lore. Some even despise their fans. Those are people that just want to tell stories that represent their social political views, even if they don't make sense for the characters that they're writing. And of course, these mega corporations that control these properties don't exactly make it easy for you to get in and understand what's canon. So maybe it's time for something new. It is. So I started this channel. Well, technically, I started doing recording like in 2016. And I believe the channel's name was uh, New Narrative something, or some version of that. And that's because I noticed that the narrative coming out of just at first, it was the news and mainstream, like mainstream news channels like CNN and MSNBC and things like that. The narrative was all seemed to focus on victimization a lot, right? And then subsequently, well, after after that, I noticed that that victimization narrative was creeping up into all media. And after that, I noticed the narrative, <clears throat> not only was the narrative about victimization, but they were pushing a lot of woke content into traditional characters, such as comic book characters. And it really perturbed me because my personal opinion about what you identify as today or tomorrow, if you're an adult, that's your business, I don't care but it's really irritating when you take characters I grew up with and push some woke agenda on them. Um, so I started griping about that. And Eric July, I, well, he, as far as I know, he started off on YouTube basically, um, I guess if you, I'm assuming, cause I haven't followed I didn't follow him from the beginning, but I'm assuming he started off just critiquing comics. And if he, if he was like me, he started to notice that, hey, man, like, what's going on with these storylines? What's going on with this narrative? Why is all this woke content getting pushed into these things? So he got perturbed so much that he created a comic book company. And his first issue, uh, they got a million dollars in a day. So that just shows the market is there for non-woke content, right? So Eric has been constantly on this grind. I've been intermittent. So I'm with, I wish him all the best. I'm really excited for him because he's like the spear right now. Him and like Daily Wire, like the content that, that's being pushed that's non-woke, right? Um, of course, I've been... I've been putting out non-woke content myself and I would hope that one day, you know, enough of this type of content gets out there that people who are not really, who haven't really noticed what has happened, like at least they'll have a comparison like, oh, here's a romantic comedy that's just about 
romance. And here's a wait, man, here's a romantic comedy that's about all these social justice issues and gender identity issues. Like we we need some options, especially because content like the content I was writing. I believe can't prove it until Elon Musk buys Twitter <laughs> or someone buys Amazon that the algorithm suppresses non-woke content and elevates woke content. But let's listen to him for a minute. Get back to Eric July. We are a comic book company first and foremost that will never be forgotten no matter how big this venture gets. And we are guided by a set of principles known as the Ripperverse ethic. You will find this on a page in every single book that we release. And it's a set of standards that we certainly want you to hold us to. There are three main things that we will always emphasize. Number one, respect the customer. We aren't owed your dollar, but we love to have you as longtime supporters. It's going to be up to us to keep you interested and invested. Now, anytime there's passion involved, there's going to be those conflicts, but we'll respect you. So as long as you respect us, it's all about reciprocity. Our second point of emphasis is canon and continuity. This is an ever-expanding universe. There's going to be many of characters that will be introduced. But when you buy a book from us, you own a piece of history. It matters. These events will not be erased by way of time travel or some multiversal aspect. And number three, a comprehensive timeline. No matter when you jump into this space, we want to make it easy for you to get caught up on some characters that you're interested in. So we're going to keep the reboots to a minimum. I don't... Now, you may be asking yourself, if you just stumbled over this uh, on this uh, channel, why is this gray haired man concerned about comic books? I'm concerned about comic books because of the audience that, that comic books targets, and that's children. And today's comic books, I grew up reading comics. Here, July obviously grew up reading comics. I'm a Marvel fan. Not so much DC, sorry. But, you know, that this content has a lot of influence on, on your children. So for those out there with children, Eric July is providing an option for you in the comic book space that is non-woke. And I think that's just important. And that's, it's very important. So I, I would hope that for anyone who's listening here, go to ripperverse.com and check it out. Support the brother. Um, I've, I've got a copy. It's on its way in the mail, and I'll review it when I get around to reading it. Uh, it hasn't arrived yet, but when it gets here, I'll review it and, and give my two cents on it. But I'm sure it's going to be better than most of the garbage that we've been seeing lately that we just sit in front of a TV or, you know, at the movies just looking at just dumb content. Like, shall I name a few? Uh, the last season, last two seasons of Game of Thrones, uh, all Star Wars since <laughs> recent Star Wars, uh, you know, anything on Disney that has anything to do with superheroes or, or Star Wars. I mean, come on, man. Like, the writing is a, a, atrocious, right? For, you got non-work woke content. You got woke content being plastered onto just horrific writing. So, for those with kids, especially, and those who may be adults who you know older and love comics, give this guy a chance, man. I think we we definitely need options in the market. Wary, we know that picking up the pieces is part of the fun, so we're not gonna exactly hold your hand. While I personally value liberty, we're not going to beat you over the head with on the nose current politics and current narratives that will completely contradict what it is that we're trying to do here. So whether you're into our main character in our first book, I Sum, or you're into Yaira, or you're interested in all of them will certainly have you as a customer. Your ethnic background or genetic makeup is wholly irrelevant to us. Boom. I think I'll stop it there. So. I have some content that I want to push here. I just released this. 
I think you guys will love it. Things I wish I learned in February. Uh, it's full of just historical gems. It's real short. It's about 60 something pages of actual text and about 15 or 20 or so um, drawings. I got an amazing artist do some drawings for me. And one of them in here, as you can see, is when the free blacks voted to ratify the Articles of the Confederation. And, and there's a story about interracial marriage and colonial Maryland, uh, some things about white Christian slavery and just some information about property values right before the Civil War between the North and South, uh, debunking a lot of the narratives about how rich the South was and how prosperous the South was. They were a joke. Uh, the slave owners, black and white, may have been prosperous, but the South in general, relative to the North, was broke. Uh, so things I wish I learned in February, go pick that up. It's free until Thursday, the 20th, 720. Um, of course, there's my original award-winning memoir, Our Two Societies. That's also free. Uh, until Thursday, and then you have my series, Nyack, Ideas in Blood, and the first book, Nyack, and the second in that series, Marshall, is out, so they're all free until Thursday. I'm working on the third and final series, and that should be out probably sometime next year, God willing. So, hey, thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, go out, share these Share this content with a friend or whatever. Uh, support content creators that don't care about your identity, your race, your gender. Just care about you as an individual. And with that, I'm out. Drop a line. Say hi. Peace.